It is that time to revisit the Smash Bros. Ultimate tier list. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. This is exactly what I've been waiting Now, in the past, I've done quite a few different tier lists. Usually, I did one for almost every single patch. But recently, the last update of Smash Ultimate is the final update. We are no longer getting any more balancing updates. So the current balance of the fighters is what is going to be until the end of the game's lifespan, at least in competitive play. <laughs> so with that said, I think this is probably going to be the final tier list I'll ever make. Simply because there's not going to be any updates, except something crazy were to happen, a character were to get banned, or, or we start playing in a different version of Ultimate. I think this is mostly going to be staying roughly the same, even in a few years. We also have a greater understanding of where the game is at, and it's been quite a few years since the game came out, so I think we can make something that's rather accurate. Now, tier lists are never going to be perfect, simply because a lot of it is more opinion-based rather than statistically what could be. Statistics are not always the most accurate, and some of the more objective results tier lists feel completely off when you look at them anyway. This tier list is also not ordered entirely within the groups, so if I put a character 44 and another character 39 within the same tier, to me, they're basically just as good. And also, just because you are playing a character lower on the tier list doesn't mean you can't be your opponent if you're significantly better. But also, if you're playing a better character, doesn't mean you should never lose to somebody else that's playing a worse character. Roughly speaking, characters that are more towards the top of the tier list are just strictly better than other characters, meaning you have more options and it's overall easier and more consistent to win. And characters that are lower on the tier list means that it's a lot more difficult to actually win in that competitive format unless you are significantly better than your opponent. And as you climb the ladders of competitive play, it gets further and further more difficult to differentiate yourself in terms of skill level compared to other competitors. To put it bluntly, if you were to beat MKLeo, you're probably going to be slightly better than him that said, not significantly better than him that said. Does that make sense? Now with that said, let's get onto the tier list. So this tier list is going to be divided in three parts. Today, we're going to be focusing on the lower side of the spectrum of the tier list. The next video is going to focus on the mid part and then the final one on the top tier. And also, before we get started, I just released a Valorant video that took me like a week to make. It's actually one of the best videos I ever made. If you guys could go check it out, link in the description below. Watch the video in full. Support the channel. I will appreciate that quite a bit. Uh, Drews, if I'm well, not you really. Sound, you sound like zero, bro. Whoop. Zero, the Smash player. Who, who is that? Yeah, I don't know. That's my girlfriend. Smash player. You're being kind of weird, bro. Now, to start off in bottom tier, we have Little Mac and Isabel. Now, I know in the past I have won quite a bit with Little Mac, but the reality is that Little Mac is a very, very challenging fighter to win. The majority of the time where I beat super top players with Little Mac, like MKLeo or, or Simsora or Naro, more often than not, I was abusing online play, and I kind of know how these guys play just from playing years against them and with them. So I know their habits in and out. So I'm just abusing maybe one or two finesse tactics to be able to get that win. But if we truly were competing in a tournament setting where they were able to camp me and they kind of cared more about the win and it wasn't online, it would be a lot more challenging to actually take a consistent W. The issues with Little Mac are the same issues that's always plagued them. The character has a horrendous recovery, very, very bad disadvantage state, does not really have a real aerial game. And in general, a lot of his follow-ups, while he does have better follow-ups than he did when the game first came out due to patches, it is still not enough to really push him over the edge. Fact of the matter is that if you're playing this character in a competitive setting and you get hit once and you get thrown up into the air, you're most likely just going to outright die. As soon as you lose that stock, you're going to get camped out. If there are platforms, it's probably looking like a GG at that point. Unless you land a lucky or very good read and land a KO punch, the match is already over. The threshold that your opponent has to cross to be able to beat you is very low. All he has to do is a very low effort combo that pops you up into the air, maybe follow up with a decent edge guard, and you're most likely dead. Even the best Little Mac players will probably die to some chic player jumping off the level with a backer. The character is just too fragile, and you have to be able to make consistent, very difficult reads to just take a stock at times. But hey, I mean, at least the character is very fun to win with. When you do get that win, people talk about it. It's fun. You can make videos out of it, you know. So the character does have a place in the game, although clearly not competitively. Now, Isabel, I was always a proponent of Isabel being not that bad, right? I think this is probably the lowest I've ever placed her, if not the lowest I've ever placed her. But I kind of came to the realization that the archetype of Villager and Isabel in this game is not very good. Not only does the archetype of character feel much worse than in Smash 4, but I personally just feel like Isabel is just not that good, even defensively, where I feel like you're playing much more degenerate, you're camping, you're grabbing a percentage lead and then forcing your opponent to approach and playing around in the edge and just, you know, playing degenerate. Even then, it's very difficult to win because some characters and a lot of characters now have reflectors. A lot of characters have outright better projectiles. 
Not to mention that characters will outrange her. And if she gets thrown off the level, her recovery is not good. She doesn't have a way of defending herself off the level other than just swinging. But as soon as she has to do a B, loses her jump, you're probably going to get spiked and die. This character is essentially combo food off the level. And when you're getting juggled, you don't really have an option to land either. The character also has a surprising amount of lag in all of her moves. It feels like consistently she is lagging every time she does her main tools in neutral feels like you have really big windows to punish her and the best characters all have very fast combo starters that can do out of neutral meaning you threw out a move and it barely missed you're going to get punished big time and ultimate is a bit more mashy than other smash games so you do have to get away with mashing on your opponent at times and i feel like isabel just doesn't get away with it whatsoever there have been times where isabel players have gotten some upset wins some decent wins here and there and some bigger wins over there but that's not meant a whole lot because other than these very few far in between upsets the character has not really accomplished anything in the span of ultimate and while she is a fun and cute character to play with the reality is that she is just a watered down worst version of villager who is not that good of a character either now moving up not that much but slightly to low tier from bottom tier we have dr mario ganondorf king Gidity, me sword fighter zelda villager bowser jr and ridley now of all these characters i feel like the better ones for sure at least to me feel like dr mario ganondorf and king Gidity. if i have to choose one character who i think is the best low tier i'll probably have to go with dr mario reason why i feel like dr mario just feels a bit more solid is because the engine of character of mario is very solid very good in this game mario is in general is a very flexible character you have a decent projectile you have a decent you have a decent projectile a decent reflector you have consistent throw combos a kill throw you have ways of landing where you can kind of finesse a little bit you have a decent out be out of shield there are ways that you can do damage and just the way the character can play it's very easy if you're better than your opponent you can find ways to finesse that w i also feel like the character mainly loses due to lack of range lack of speed and definitely getting edge guarded if you're playing against somebody who can really push those buttons off and put you in those disadvantaged spots there's not much the character can do and that's where you kind of start falling apart because once you get thrown off the level against someone proficient at edge guarding you are just going to repeatedly die there's not much you can do dr mario just cannot truly defend himself off the level but the character is not that bad i mean if you're fighting somebody better with dr mario he can definitely catch you off guard in a competitive setting especially if they're an experienced mario player but at that point if you're a good mario player you should just be playing mario right dr mario is just it's a funny haha -ha win i mean it's the truth every time i play dr mario i'm either drunk or it's because i just want to get a, a funny win on somebody following up we have ganondorf probably one of the most fun characters to play in this game ganondorf is absolutely a character very much like dr mario where if you're better than your opponent you can style on them it's very notorious when maybe a top player will play with somebody who's not a top player with ganondorf and you can just run them over with whatever you want the character can do pretty much whatever you want just because you can make consistent reads and the character can put you in really precarious spots where if you are not exactly sure of what you're doing and you can play the matchup correctly the character feels like he's much better than he really is but when you put him in a competitive setting the character is far too slow cannot defend himself up in the air whatsoever it gets edge guarded for days way too laggy you can get punished out of shield for so many different things combo from almost anything and the character truly doesn't have options to throw out the character is very reactive he's kind of hoping the whole time you throw out a move you lag somewhere you overcommit somewhere you get greedy somewhere but if you actually play a style where you wait for him to start swinging the character falls apart so bad it's not even funny the character can swing the character can not really space you out he just doesn't have options he only just waits his forever game is to just wait and if he's not gonna wait he's gonna dash it like our side b and all you have to do is just move away from him and then you have like three second window to punish him right that's just the thing about ganondorf king did is interesting because i feel like a lot of people think he's actually even worse than this maybe even the worst character in the game or somewhere down there i think king Diddy fits this very specific niche where he's a heavy character has a few more options first inhale is actually really good he can get away from the ledge and he can land with that tool something that all of the other heavies cannot really speak of he can also has he also has multiple jumps meaning that he can land in spots where the other heavies cannot his biggest issue is that he's insanely laggy every other move he has just lags for for years he actually doesn't have that great of kill power a lot of his moves are not that strong the moves that you're going to consistently be landing to get a kill maybe like four tilt maybe down tilt maybe neutral air sometimes up tilt these moves are not killing as early as you will like if king diddy had a bit more knockback meaning a lot of these moves were killing 10 to 20 percent earlier the character will actually be significantly better but it feels like you have to rack up so much damage and the issue with a heavy is that you're always going to be at a higher percentage than your opponent you're always going to be struggling because the character is combo food and gets just messed up in neutral by almost anybody decent in neutral so you have to be able to have something to be able to win the match and turn over the stock while being at a higher percentage with rage 
instantly you can make that comeback. But the character doesn't really let you do that. He's flexible, a lot more flexible than most heavies, but just lacks that kill power. At least Ganon will kill you if he hits you with something at 80. Most likely he's going to kill you. He can even kill you with a back here at 60%. King Dedede doesn't have that. He doesn't have that finesse, which is actually a big deal. Me Sword Fighter, I feel like this character shouldn't be that bad. Because, you know, you have custom options, and then you have range, and then you, you can do a little bit of finesse. The swords can't always be that bad. The reality is that the character is just not very flexible. The recovery is not very flexible. The neutral doesn't have very many options. And the issue is that when you're trying to play this character, I feel like you fall into the same repetitive playstyle of just relying on his bread and butter. You just essentially want to get the same one to two combos repeatedly. And if you're not getting that, then you're going to keep fishing for the very same kill setup over and over again because the character is extremely one dimensional. His kit itself is not horrendous. But just the fact that he plays so predictable means that in a competitive setting, the character falls apart very fast. The issue with Zelda, very similar to Mii Sword Fighter, the character extremely one-dimensional, actually has more lag than you think. There's a lot of very punishable moves that this character can do. And because the same old tricks, you kind of have to land. He, he'll have these few teleport tricks. You'll have these few down B tricks. You'll have these few maybe, you know, forwarder, backer tricks after neutral air. That's kind of it. You know, after you learn those few setups, then Zelda doesn't really have much more to offer because the character is so one-dimensional. It's pretty fun to play, not gonna lie. I do have fun flying around sometimes. And it is satisfying to land certain moves, but the character is just far, far so unflexible. It's so one-dimensional. And I really dislike playing one-dimensional characters in Ultimate because the game itself is very mashy. So because the best characters are all mashy and they can do many different options while mashing on you and you can only really have one option that you can mash out it makes you so predictable you you fall apart very fast you learn this very fast that when you play a very good player and you repeat this type of play style it just doesn't work oh man villager is so tragic to me he's one of my favorite characters to play actually i think he's my fifth most played character in this game it's actually so sad to put him solo because i feel like for the longest of times i was on complete copium just hoping this character is not that bad not that bad but the, but i'm on full copium because the character clearly was bad the character never really accomplished anything the character forever struggled i think in japan he had a few results but the character just 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 lags in this game he just doesn't have that uh, ability to really be flexible he lacks speed he gets juggled for days he gets edge guarded in this game as well and it doesn't help that if you get knocked against the wall with the new mechanics of tekken you actually just die whereas in four you could just tech for days you don't even get to do that his projectile feels lackluster there's so many different ways to deal with his range and the amount of projectiles and reflectors as well, especially in the better characters, just means that the character can't really do much. So you have an issue with speed, flexibility, edge guarding, disadvantage state, and on top of that, when you're actually getting mashed on the shield, at least you can neutralize the shield, which is very good. You can up smash sometimes. That's not enough reward. You hit them for 10, 15 damage and then, you know, resets back to neutral. You're, you're kind of hoping that you can get that neutral or throw them off the level. This character thrives when you can throw people off the level and edge guard them yourself. That's where he shines. If you're actually stuck playing neutral, you're going to lose against the better characters, which is a big problem. Bowser Jr. to me never really felt that good in this game. Extremely one-dimensional, slow. I don't know if you can tell, but a lot of these characters shared the very same issues. They just lack flexibility, speed, edge card, and it's pretty much the same, roughly the same things that keeps them bad, essentially. Very, very predictable character. It has to rely on the same two to three options in neutral repeatedly. Some of his best mix-ups actually are using the same moves, just sometimes instantly and sometimes you wait a little bit. Cannot really withstand taking a hit. As soon as you take a hit, this character gets put in a terrible spot. Doesn't have a way to land consistently. It struggles to land a kill setup. He has moves that can kill for sure. You get force smash, you get back, and you're going to die. But landing those moves is a lot of commitment. He lags for quite a bit. And all of his moves that can actually hit a good punch are all extremely laggy. And it's also one of those characters that I feel like are mostly a gimmick. You're more likely to encounter a Bowser Jr. player being more difficult than he really is simply because you probably have never fought one and it's a very weird rare character to fight uh, i say zelda is more common i say ganondorf is a lot more common dr mario is a lot more common you're probably going to know the matchup roughly in your head but when you fight that bowser jr in bracket that's probably the first one you'll ever fight and he's going to catch you off guard because they only have a few tricks but as soon as you actually grind the matchup a little bit this character is just so <laughs> i mean i can't even say mid <laughs> Lastly, we have Ridley, who I for a long time I also felt was a bit better because you had that optimal shadow shield, you had the multiple jumps. I felt like this character was not that bad. But I think one thing that really struggle I think one thing you really struggle with this character is that he has a ridiculous lag on some of his moves. And then for some reason that's really strange to me, Samus is heavier than this character, which is really strange. And this character is not even heavy, this character is average in terms of weight. So you're dying. Essentially, you're a big character that gets combo extensively but you die early. So you get the worst 
of being a big character because at least the bigger characters are dying at 150 percent really is going to die to 100 to something which is so shameful they should have made this character heavier and they should have added more they should have changed his gravity so that he should be landing faster he should be a fast faller uh, i think making him heavier and more of a fast faller would have really helped them i think it should have also give him a move to use out of shield uh other than the ones that he currently has something maybe in front of him that's a little bit more reliable um, but other than that, I mean, really is kind of perpetually facing away from you so he can up smash Shadow Shield, which is one of his most solid options. I also feel like if they had changed maybe his Forder, maybe gave him a Forder that's more of a striking move, a Forder that can edge guard, he will be a lot more lethal. But yeah, what's really holding him back is the fact that this character gets combo for absolute days. At least he can be a little tricky to edge guard, but if you do have the right move, maybe a counter or something like that, this character just can't recover either. He's also very vulnerable up in the air. I also feel like he has that Bowser Jr. gimmick going on where you don't fight as many of them. They're a bit more common, but as soon as you fight a few of them, you kind of feel like, okay, I can just hold shield here, edge card him here, jump and hit him over here. Oh, this move lags forever. I'm going to wait for this, wait for that, and that's the match. You know, <laughs> it doesn't take a whole lot to really get really off his rocker. So that's what we have for now. This is the, the low tier and bottom tier tier list. The next one is going to be the mid tiers, and then we'll get to the top tiers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you guys can stay tuned with more content. I'll be trying to finish this tier list and then we'll be moving on to other videos. With that said, thanks for watching.